Today we're going to talk about my favorite art books. Art books are some of my favorite things that I own and I have so many of them so it was kind of hard to pick my favorites but I can't wait to show you. Let's start with one of my favorite artists, Myra Kalman. This is The Principles of Uncertainty. If you haven't heard of Myra Kalman before, she's a really great artist living in New York. Uh, she does a lot of work for The New Yorker and The New York Times. I think she started out with writing and then illustration kind of came after. Oh my gosh, uh, one of the things that I love about her is the way that she does like handwritten type. Like it's kind of like script, but um, it's like imperfect and it's really cute. So here's the little cover thing and it has such a good beginning. It says, what is this book? What is anything? Who am I? Who are you? This book kind of feels like life advice. One of my favorite things in this book is this map that her mom drew. It says, my mother drew this map for me. This is the world through her eyes. She is no longer alive and it is impossible to bear. She loved Fred Astaire and there you go, on you go, hopeless heroic US. She, I guess she told her mom to draw a map of the United States and this is what she drew. And I think it's really awesome because I also love maps. So side note, I'll probably do an art book video all on the books I have just on maps, which I'm like the most excited for. There's also embroidery in here. She uses photography too, which I think is really fun. I just love the way that Myra Kalman paints. I think it, it looks really natural. Yeah, this is like, this is an awesome book. I highly recommend it. I kind of just feel like everyone should have it. Everyone should read this. The next book that I want to talk about is Charlotte Salomon Life Worth Theater. This is probably my favorite art book that I own. If I could only keep one of these books, it would probably be this one. I think I look at it the most often. And it has a lot of love. As you can maybe tell, there's like paint all over it. Look how beautiful the inside is. I found this book at Romans. Um, when I lived in Pasadena, I lived right behind Romans, which is like the best bookstore ever. I had never heard of Charlotte Salomon before finding this book there, and it was like the only copy that they had, so I was really happy to find it. Charlotte Salomon was a Jewish artist from Berlin, and between 1940 and 1942, she created this play, which is called Life Worth Theater, and it's like an autobiographical play. It's kind of fictionalized, like a lot of the names are changed, if not all of the names. It has a prologue, a main part, and a finale. This is a really sad and heavy story. Charlotte Salomon was murdered in Auschwitz a year after she completed this work. I think that her work is so impressive because in those two years, she created 769 gouache paintings and 320 pages of text, like script for the play to go with each painting. And sometimes there's even like songs. I love looking at things where people document their life, whether it's like a diary or a sketchbook or a memoir. And this one I find so inspiring because she did it in such a unique way. Like I've never seen anyone make a play of their life. I'm, maybe they have, but uh, I haven't seen it before. And I love that it's like on paper with these paintings. But I think it's important to note that this is not a diary. This is like, Charlotte Salomon was a trained artist and this is her reflecting on like her whole life and making it into this play. I really love the way that she paints text. like. It's just so beautiful and I love the way she combines text and image and I love when she does repetition like on this page. She does a lot of repetition which I think is really cool and a lot of her paintings feel like comics and it's cool to see comics in like this style that's so painterly because she she's kind of creating like panels 
Um, I also found a website that has this whole book like documented so you don't even have to buy the book if you're interested in seeing all these paintings it's on this website that I'll link but personally I love holding it and flipping through it's just very special so yeah that's Charlotte Salomon one of my favorite artists and we'll move on to the next one okay the next book I'm going to talk about is the look of the book. I got this one at Barnes & Noble because recently I've been super into book covers. Like I would love to be a book cover designer. A lot of my favorite books are my favorite because of the way that the artists combine text and image and that's like what a book cover is so I think that's part of the reason that I like them so much. I love the way that books are like a piece of artwork that you can hold. It's like like I just love the objectness of them. I think I like reading because I like book covers so much. Sometimes art books, like, there will be text in there, but I don't look at it at all. It's just like not interesting and I only buy the book because of the pictures. This one, all of the writings in here are really interesting, which is like definitely a plus. I think one of my favorite parts of this book is this section, Book Covers Through the Decades. And it starts in in the 1820s and it goes to now. And the now one is really interesting. So like 2010 was the rise of the book cover tote. <laughs> and they show a picture of the Great Gatsby on a tote. And then, oh, speaking of Great Gatsby, I'm really excited about this. I have, um, so this is my copy of the Great Gatsby. It was printed, this one is from 2018. So, there it is. But then recently I was at the library and in the like library bookshop thing, I found this copy of The Great Gatsby. This is from 1986. I haven't read The Great Gatsby since high school. Like I bought this copy a while ago because I wanted to reread it. But I just think that The Great Gatsby has like the most iconic book cover. And this one, when I found it, it just feels so special to hold because it has like this glossy texture and I love the like compact size of it. And then it has like these like paint marks on it. And I don't know how that got there. This nice sticker, even like the way the book is like kind of cracking here. And the colors are so much more vibrant than in this edition. And the font, I love the font of this one. And then here are, here are the backs. Yeah, I just found that and wanted to share. Okay, so back to the book cover book. In 2015, this one, this one's pretty interesting, I think. The beginning of the era of the interchangeable, big type, colorful cover, a trend which could be thought of as the, it will work well as a thumbnail on Amazon cover. Arguably, the end of the cover as interpretation or criticism. That's kind of crazy. So yeah, if you're into book covers, I really recommend this one. And another thing I like is this section in the front. It just feels like when books have things like this, it just feels so intentional. Like they really thought about the design of the publication and I love it. The next book I'm gonna talk about is really special to me because this was my first art book. I got it in high school. It's the art book, it's huge. I used to love this cover so much too. I would like stare at it. I think I drew it one time. It's pretty fun. The art book is a collection of art by famous artists from medieval times to modern times. And it's organized alphabetically by last name. And basically each page is a different artist. Every artist gets one page. It has their name, the title of the painting. There's like installation pieces, but most of the work in here is paintings and then it has like a little bit of information about the artist and maybe the artwork. So in high school this was a great book for me because this is how I found out about a lot of the famous artists. So if you are like getting into art or art history I think this is a great way to learn about it because you just flip through and if like if one of the paintings speaks to you or resonates with you you can look more into that artist. In the back there's like a whole glossary of terms and art movements. It's also great great to have for anyone because it's like the art book. This is how I learned about David Hockney. It has his famous painting, A Bigger Splash, and I used to like look at that one all the time and I would just keep this book open on my bedroom floor so I could see that painting. Yeah, this is a really special one to me and I like it. In 
Next, let's talk about A Lion in Paris by Beatrice Alemania. Here it is. Here's the back. And what's really cool about it is it opens this way. And it starts with a map. Here's the first page. He was a big lion, a young, curious, and lonely lion. He was bored at home on the grasslands, and so one day he set off to find a job, love, and a future. So that's what this book is about. It's about this lion in Paris. But the illustrations are so great. I find this book really inspiring for its mixed media, the way that they like incorporate collage. And the collage sometimes is cut out kind of chunky, but it works so well. And the colors go together really nicely. I love all of the textures that Beatrice Alemania uses. I found this book at a grocery store, like a fancy grocery store. It was um, in the farmer's market at the Grove. And that's how I learned about this artist. So yeah, that's another thing that's awesome about art books. Like you just find a book that's really cool and and now it's a new artist that you know. Like, look how cool that is. And then the last one that I'm gonna talk about is actually not a book, it's a magazine. Illustoria magazine. I have three editions right here, three issues. So it's like you can subscribe to this and they come out three or four times a year, but you can also buy individual copies if you're interested in just that itch issue. It's a children's magazine, but it's great for any age. It is filled with like great contemporary and really well done illustrations, like super high quality. They have fun activities like here's Race to the Silly Goose. I love this artist too. The illustrations in here are also like a variety of styles, which I think is super cool. One of my favorite things about Illustoria is in the back, they have this on our bookshelf section and I love children's books. So this is like a great way for me to stay up to date and like see what children's books are popular and the Illustoria is loving because they have really good taste. This magazine, it focuses on art, storytelling, and DIY projects, so they include a lot of like craft or drawing ideas or sometimes writing assignments. And I teach after school art to elementary school kids, so sometimes I will use some of the ideas in here as projects that we do in class. So each issue has a different theme. So this one is on the senses, this one is on the rainforest, and this one is humor. Illustoria is also like a part of McSweeney's publishing. I love McSweeney's, they're based in San Francisco. And everything they make is just such high quality, so thoughtful, and I love Illustoria. Thank you so much for watching and looking at all my art books. Let me know in the comments what your favorite art books are because I love finding new ones. I'm gonna put all of the art books that I talked about today in the description below so that you can check them out if you like it. <laughs> Bye, thanks for watching.